All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, working with panel data or longitudinal data, and we're going to talk about fixed effects and random effects models. And we're going to be using this data set uh, that we partly um, got from a biostats book and partly made up, looking at a, a drug called Lechinson, which is uh, something for to treat Alzheimer's. And um, we're going to look at uh, basically five memory scores, uh, five tests of memory that were conducted with um, 47 individuals. And um, as you see here, the data, there's five scores in this memories tasks. Then we have the drug where zero is the placebo group and one is the treatment group. We have the ID number for the individual, their sex, their age. We have an occupation, um, their last occupation uh, coded from one through four. And then we have their blood pressure, uh, where one is um, low blood pressure, two is average, and three is high blood pressure. So that, that's the data. And the first thing you need to do when you're analyzing longitudinal or panel data uh, on this data is that we have to convert it. That format I just showed you, that's a wide form where basically each respondent has a line. And we have their five scores on that line. Well, Stata needs uh, that data to actually, actually be presented in the long form which that means is that uh, each score, each time period is its own line. So basically here I'm just showing you a little example. We have the same data just displayed differently. So this is the first individual at their visit number one. Here is the score uh, of their uh, mental test which corresponds to this same first line here and their score. The second line is the first individual, their second visit and their score in that visit which corresponds to score number two. So the first thing we need to do is reshape that data using the reshape command from Stata, which is pretty simple. Um, if you pull up the do file, you see that the reshape command is pretty simple. We type out reshape long to designate that it's going to we're taking it from the wide to the long format. You can also reshape it from the wide, from the long to the wide if you wanted to. Uh, we're going to identify uh, the variable that's going to be changing across time, which is score, um, and then comma, and we're going to identify the each individual uh, which which corresponds to the ID number variable uh, it's going to create a new variable automatically when we reshape the data called this dash under J and um, that's going to correspond to each of those scores and we're just going to rename that to visit um, and then we're going to label that variable visit so let me just run that um, highlighting it and run and if we look at the data now we see now that everything is in the long format where we have uh, each visit now corresponds to a line and each individual has five lines because they went to the clinic five times and had five different scores um, so that's the first thing you do so the second thing you uh, want to do now is to think a little bit about uh, what kind of model you want to run on this uh, longitudinal data and uh, we have here written out uh, a basic regression um, prediction equation and um, I'm colorblind so hopefully this came out correctly but basically um, the black part is the constant of the formula uh, so that doesn't change the blue part is the observe and what is estimated for both fixed and random effects models uh, and they're considered to be time variant factors so for this example that we're playing with um, visit the is changing over time um, so you know each visit is going to be considered a time variant um, uh, type of measure now the green part of this model are time invariant factors so things that don't change over time so like sex um, age I guess in this situation would be also a time invariant factors so things that are kind of stable across the um, observations now in a fixed effect model these um, cannot be estimated uh, whereas in the random effect model they can be estimated um, so we'll talk a little bit about if you want to kind of get rid of those uh, effects or if you want to consider them into the estimates now the red part is the unobserved individual specific effect so it could be somebody's personality or their you know maybe in this example they're the assumed unassumed uh, propensity towards answering uh, these 
these memory tasks. You know, maybe somebody has a particular propensity to doing well on these tests, and we can't observe that. We don't know that. Um, and so, in a fixed, um, and and that's a fixed entity or a fixed effect throughout the time. But you know, these things we can't really observe, and so um, they're not really going to be explicitly in the model. And then the purple part is the unobserved random error, uh, the residual that we're always uh, assuming is affecting there. So when we're discussing, you know, whether to use a fixed effect or random effect model, it's really to how we're going to deal with this issue of the unobserved uh, issues. And basically, there's two strategies uh, that you can use, and that are basically assumptions that you're going to make about this uh, unobserved fixed effect, this unobserved um, individual specific effect. Um, the first assumption is uh, we can use a fixed effect model. And that assumption is that the individual specific effect is correlated with the independent variables. Um, and so this red part, we're going to assume that they're heavily correlated with one of the independent variables. So maybe your propensity towards um, um, having good math scores, or I'm sorry, good memory scores, is correlated with the number of visits that you have, correlated with uh, the constant. Um, if we assume that, um, the time invariant factors will be excluded from the model uh, because essentially what will be happening is that we'll be taking the difference between each observation with the within group mean values and we'll essentially just get rid of that individual specific effect um, by doing so. So in by doing so, essentially these uh, the green and the red will be kind of taken as zeros and excluded from the model. So we won't be able to estimate them in the fixed effect model. So let's run that um, to show an example. Bring up my do file. And because we're using uh, panel data, we need to first set um, uh, this, this data into kind of uh, these types of modeling. And you have to type then, you have to use this XT set, which is just basically setting up the analysis. And you identify um, the identifying number and the time variant um, uh, variable, so visits, so just XT set, we run it, and you see here uh, tells us that okay here's the panel variable, it's ID, uh, it's strongly balanced, so uh, we have, um, so that means basically that each person has the same type of uh, number of visits, essentially there's no missing values. And then the time variable is the visits, and it's 1 through 5. And the default assumption is that each unit change in the visits is what the time is. Um, so that's set. Now we can just run a basic regression uh, with the fixed effect. And it, that's just the XT, so telling Stata to use this XT uh, subcommand, regress. Uh, the dependent variable, which is the mental score, uh, modeling visit, the drug that we used, uh, sex, age, and occupation, and blood pressure, and then comma, FE for fixed effect. So I'm just going to go ahead and run that. And uh, like I said, the time invariant factors will be automatically excluded, and because the drug, sex, age, and occupation, and blood pressure really don't change, uh, those things uh, are admitted. And we see that over time, there is a 0.49 um, increase. There's a significant increase in the memory task. Um, but this includes both people who are in the control and in the um, treatment group. So to estimate this visit effect, um, we just have to use an if command. Uh, so if you look down, you can see that I basically just have uh, this if command. If lechen equals 0, run the model. And if lechen equals 1, run the model. So let me r highlight both of these and run the model. And uh, so we here, this is the first uh, placebo group. We see actually that their memory scores got worse. We have a negative uh, effect for visits. And uh, that's statistically significant. And then for the treatment group, um, the effect is pretty large actually, it's 1.8 so their uh, memory actually got better over time which uh, makes sense. Um, so that's a fixed effect model and we're omitting the time invariant factors here. So 
Another type of model that we could do is the random effect, and in that assumption is that the individual specific effects that we can't observe, we assume that they are uncorrelated with the independent variable, so that there is no correlation um, with the number of visits with some kind of internal propensity towards the memory. Both time variant and time invariant variables will now be estimated, uh, so you'll get actually an estimate uh, for these guys. Um, you know, let's say that you were interested uh, in these time invariant uh, factors that you observed, and you assume that this unobserved error uh, or unobserved um, specific effect um, is uncorrelated with X and Z, um, and we might be interested in what Z is doing. So that's a random effect. And basically in that situation, um, the this specific effect is going to be kind of put in with the regular error term. They're going to be combined. And uh, to run that model, you just um, it's pretty simple. It's the same command, you know, xt reg score. Uh, you got your dependent variable, your independent variables, and then you put a comma and you just type in re uh, for a random effect. And, uh, and you just run it. So here's the output, and this is now a random effect model regression. And um, you see here the output. Uh, all of the variables are now included, both the time invariant and the time variant. Uh, visits is our first invariant, uh, and we see that it's still statistically significant. Uh, people's memory improved over time. Lynchin, the drug, has uh, a large effect, even though that's not statistically significant. Uh, an estimate, and then we have sex, age, occupation, and blood pressure, which are all the um, time invariant effects. Um, yeah, so let's show you a different type of GLS regression that you can use, and that's called the maximum maximum likelihood method. Um, and you run that, and um, we usually use. Uh, maximum likelihood because it's a little bit more efficient and the standard errors are kind of estimated differently. So the effects are exactly the same, um, but um, the standard errors are much smaller. And we see that Lynchin, for instance, has a significant effect now at a 0.1 level. Um, it's dropped down from uh, 0.103. So um, it's a little bit more effective in getting the standard errors down. Okay, so uh, another random effect model that you can use um, in case your dependent variable is not normally distributed, but it's still a continuous measure. We won't run it here, but this um, uh, population average model um, is a random effect with less restrictions in terms of the distribution of the dependent variable. And uh, you just write the same uh, command, except you put a comma and you put PA for uh, population average. Um, sometimes you see these in psychology studies. Uh, are used quite often, but not so much in sociology. And the uh, last thing we're going to cover is if you don't want to deal with this whole uh, random and fixed effect uh, distinctions, which is really just kind of based on um, the theory behind what you're modeling, um, some people use a between effect model, which is basically looking at the average scores of everything across the five repeated measures. And uh, that's just a different way to get around uh, this whole issue of time. To run that, uh, you just put a comma and type in BE, and that's the between effect. I highlight it and run. So this is basically almost like an ordinary least squares regression, um, but you're basically looking at the averages of each individual across those five times, and then putting all those averages together into the model. Um, and it just gives you um, a slightly different way of dealing with this issue of time. And uh, well, yeah, that's it. Sorry if this is a bit short, but uh, that's that's our video.